So why is podcasting such an effective tool for advisors and how can you get up and running with your own podcast quickly? That's what we're going to talk about today on Horse's Mouth Live. Hello, I am Doug Pierce, Associate Editor at Horse's Mouth, and I am joined by my co-host today, Devin Kropp, uh, Associate Editor at Horse's Mouth as well. Devin, how are you doing today? Good. Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me on, Doug. So we're talking about podcasting today. Really excited about this topic because I think that podcasting just really fits well uh, for advisors. Uh, now, I don't think I have to tell everybody watching today that podcasting is like a huge, <laughs> a huge phenomenon uh, that's grown up in popularity by leaps and bounds, especially in recent years. Uh, do you listen to podcasts? My guess, my guess is that plenty of you do. Let us know in the comments uh, what your favorite podcast is, and if you listen to them, we'd love to know. So, first, we're gonna start off before we get to the how, because I know. A lot of you are wondering, you know, what microphone should I get? You know, what what host uh, should I use before? That's going to come. We're going to get to that. But before we discuss that, I really want to cover the the why and the what. So let me go ahead and bring up my bullets. So when we're talking about why, why podcast? And I think the obvious answer is, well, it does help you build your credibility as, a, as an expert especially if you have a niche it can really uh build your influence within that niche don't you agree Devin? definitely um i think especially if you have a niche um having a podcast it gives you such a unique avenue because it's so specific um people are want to hear from you and um you know i think in marketing we're always talking about what's one to many how can i expand my messaging and i think podcasting is probably one of the best ways to be doing that right now um, is, you know, you just have to record it and then you the listeners, I mean, the, it's endless, the limit you might get on that. So I think um, really being able to have a niche and saying, I'm giving you this unique message and the information that you need um, really can create a great audience for a podcast. Yeah. And I think, so build your credibility, kind of like writing a book, something like that. It gives Definitely. you that, that, that instant visceral credibility. Also, you know, you can stay in front of your clients. You're almost like a, this, you know, verbal rock star uh, in their yeah. podcast feed that they're able to listen to all the time. So you're staying, you know, top of mind with them. Uh, and you, you are also reaching out to, to prospects, to new clients in a, in a natural way. I shared a, uh, a post earlier this morning on the horse's mouth feed uh, from Sean Lehman, who's an advisor. We're going to look at his podcast in just a second, his podcast page. But, uh, you know, he and his What's Working Now interview said that, you know, the clients he gets from podcasting, it's like a natural fit. They're just, there's immediately, there's like this rapport and this relationship that's really off to a, a great footing. So that's that's powerful and not something to be overlooked. And another thing about podcasting too, from the tech end, I think it is a lot easier to get into than something like video. There's less gear, namely you just need a microphone. If you get advanced, maybe you get an audio you know, interface or a mixer and it's less intimidating. I think uh, there is something about looking into a video camera lens that most people find <laughs> uncomfortable to say the, to say the least but with podcasting nobody's seeing you you can do it in your pajamas uh, just like your zoom meetings right right <laughs> <laughs> don't have to so, worry about doing your hair or makeup or anything yeah. like that it's definitely less intimidating <laughs> yeah exactly exactly so real quickly I just want to show you the pages of um, a few advisors that we have interviewed on our What's Working Now series, who have really taken on this podcasting a podcasting platform and really attribute podcasting to growing their business. So this is Hillary Hendershot. Uh, her podcast is a Profit Boss Radio, which is kind of like a, it's more of a general, uh, well, I guess retirement planning is more of the focus, but she, she, covers, she covers a lot of you know general 
uh, financial related uh, issues in the podcast. Um, by the way, if you're a Horse's Mouth member, uh, you can use the topic um, selection on, on the search uh, function of horsesmouth.com. Type in podcast, hit enter, and uh, the What's Working Now uh, interview we did with Hillary and all, and all the other advisors we're going to talk about and more, uh, you can find there. They'll come up there. So this is Hillary. And then we've got Sean Lehman, who uh, his he has a niche. Uh, it's working uh, with divorcees, and his podcast is Divorce and Your Money. Um, and this is his website here. You can see, I'll just kind of quickly browse over some of his topics here. You can see they all focus on his niche, divorce planning. Uh, do you need yeah, a divorce Yeah, if I can attorney? add something Absolutely. quickly about Sean. Uh, we first actually came across Sean Lehman because he um, contacted Sean Bailey and I to do an interview on his podcast um, about cybersecurity and divorce. Um, and so we we did that with him. And then we kind of turned around and said, hey, can we um, interview you about how you're doing this podcast? And he shared a lot of great insights. Um, and you can see he has over 200 episodes here. And um, he basically started his podcast um by taking an ebook that he had written and making each um, episode was just a different chapter of, of the ebook. So he was basically kind of just reading it or summarizing each chapter. Um, and he was able to create um, like 10 to 12 episodes before he ever went live. And then from there, his show has advanced. And I think we'll talk a little bit later about different show options. But um, I just want to highlight that because I think that's a really easy way for advisors to start is to take content you already have, whether it's a blog post or a newsletter, and kind of repurpose that into a podcasting episode. It doesn't have to be, you know, you interviewing a guest necessarily. It can just be you talking about a topic. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and we'll get to that uh, a little bit uh, later too. But you raised a great point, Devin, in the fact that podcasting is a great way to repurpose your content. So it doesn't have to be just just written content. Like in mm -hmm. Sean's case, you can also do if you do a webinar, mm -hmm. you can pull the audio from that, that recording of that webinar. And, you know, with a little massaging, release that as a podcast episode, right? Um, and then, of course, you can take the podcast. Maybe you do a podcast interview. You can get a transcript and then use that in your newsletter. Use it as a blog post or article on your website. Right. It, uh, it really is a great way to kind of keep the content machine uh, going. Um, that's another great thing about podcasting. Um, so let's see. I had one more uh, advisor to highlight here. This is Ryan Inman. He also has a niche. Uh, he works with uh, doctors, physicians. Uh, his podcast is the Financial Residency Podcast. You can see his his website here. And uh, it's, I mean, he gets uh, a lot of listeners. He gets a lot of reach with this. Uh, really has helped him build his, his business. And I think it also, another thing we didn't mention about podcasting, but is so true is that because you have to come up with a show idea, each time you do a show, <laughs> you really have to stay, it really kind of forces you to stay on top of, if you have a niche, on top of what's going on in your niche, you know, the latest developments, the latest things that people are curious about there. So uh, uh, it's, that's another aspect, an, an advantage of podcasting. And as Devin mentioned with Sean, when you have a guest on your podcast, you're cross-pollinating with their listenership and it's just a great way to form connections with other people in your niche or industry mm -hmm. as well. So I definitely encourage everyone to you know, subscribe to these podcasts and give them a listen. Uh, you can kind of get some ideas for maybe what you want to do uh, here. But uh, OK, <laughs> so uh, we have got a comment uh, from from Rich here who wants to know. <laughs> Why do we never see an actual horse in, in these events? You know, uh, maybe I got to add that to the to the bumper video. We'll see. I'll, I'll run it by by Bill Nicklin, our CEO, see if he thinks that's cool. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> we do. I maybe will say. We can, I think now you can get like you, these companies will do like you can have a, a farm animal like show up to your Zoom meeting. Like I've seen it for llamas and stuff. Maybe really? we can get a, a horse come on our next live stream. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> Um, 
I do know that the when I hear people talking about horse's mouth, a lot of people do call us the horse's mouth. That comes up all the yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> it's also a very common question at our workshop of why the name horse's mouth. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. So let's move on then to the what. What should you talk about? Now, as we saw with the advisors we just profiled here, the natural fit is you talk about if you have a niche, you talk with other experts in your niche, you interview them, or you talk about the latest news and developments uh, in that niche. I think that uh, while you can do a solo podcast, and that can be that can be great. There's lots of of successful solo podcasts, especially when your goal is to educate. I think interview podcasts are easier in many ways for advisors to get up and running with because it's not just you. You're not just carrying the weight. You've got somebody else on the line with you. There's a back and forth natural exchange. You know, everybody talks <laughs> to other people. We're all used to it, and I think that's an easy way to get going and generate these shows. But like I said, you can do uh, solo podcasts and you can um, just make your focus, you know, just educating about various things. Um, One thing yeah. I would encourage for, especially the solo podcast, because, um, you know, maybe you're not sure who you want to interview or you don't have a huge network. Um, like Doug said, solo podcasts can still be really um useful and entertaining and educational. Um, I would encourage everyone to try to think about the podcasts that you listen to and, and what you would like about them. And a lot of times um, the most successful podcasts are teaching something through storytelling. So I would really encourage everyone to um, think about the topics you want to discuss and then maybe come up with a client story or experience where you can teach it through a story rather than just saying, you know, data points because with a podcast on like a video, um, people are just listening, they're just hearing, they're not seeing you. And so a story can kind of keep it a little bit more compelling um, and bring them through the process a little bit um, better than just, you know, spewing facts about something. Yeah, absolutely. Sto I mean, storytelling is just, we are human beings and it's just what we do. <laughs> um, it's just known that stories stand out and people remember them much more than they do facts. Absolutely. Um, okay, so we've we've kind of covered the the why and a little bit of the what. Let's get to the how. So if you just want to get your toes wet with podcasting and you want to go from I want a podcast to I have a podcast that people can listen to on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, you know, Stitcher, Spotify. The easiest way that I found to do it is using something called anchor.fm. That's the URL of their website. You can go to as well. Now this, I'm going to both uh, talk you into this and talk you out of this at the same time. So <laughs> this is a tool you can actually download an app right to your phone and um, record the, the podcast just talking into your phone. You can edit the podcast on the phone and you can distribute the pod, publish and distribute the podcast to all of the podcast networks right from the app on your phone or your browser. So that's that's great. And I, I would say if you want to just try out podcasting, see if it jives with you and you like it, something you want to do, maybe give Anchor FM a try. Now, here's the part where I talk you out of it. Because while this platform is great, uh, in that it is super easy to use and the barrier to entry is super low. If you do find that podcasting is a fit for you and you want to do more of it, I do suggest that you use some of the other services that we're going to talk and methods that we're going to talk about because it will give you more control and more room to grow your podcast. Should you look to do things like you know, hire a podcast editor to editor the to edit the podcast for you, so they sound good, um, or they sound you know great. Um, things like that, you you really want to be using other tools. But Anchor FM is a great is a great um, tool for you. So, just real quick, I'm gonna push this here. So, 
Rich is asking, is the anchor audio quality direct to the phone or does it go through the internet when you record? I believe it's direct to the phone. So you do record locally on the, well, okay. If you're doing a solo cast, it is direct, I believe it is direct to the phone. Then you edit it and you push it live. I'm not 100% sure on that. I believe that's the way, but I do also know that Anchor FM has a built-in interview functionality where you can call somebody up on the app or service, talk with them, it records it, and then you can then edit it and publish it. And that, of course, is done over the internet. Um, That's a great feature, though, because I think sometimes the idea of, you know, recording somebody else when you're interviewing and making sure that both are being recorded um, can be tricky, especially if you're a beginner. So the fact that this app allows you to do that, I think, again, like you said, is a really good option for people just testing it out. And as Rich says, sounds like a good way to practice. Exactly. I think that that is what Anchor FM for is just a way to practice, get your feet under you and and play around with podcasting, see if it works for you. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, but uh, if you do want to you know, step it up, you've decided podcasting is right for you. You then need to look at how you're going to record it without the use of this kind of all-in-one Anchor FM app. And so for that, the thing, the first thing you need, of course, is a microphone. And this is a, a good, first of all, there are various USB <laughs> microphones that you can buy. It's really hard to buy a bad, a bad one. Okay. Uh, this one is a recent one. I think every time we do <laughs> we do a webinar or a stream about anything to do with audio and visual, I have a new microphone that I'm recommending. Yes, that's true. <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry. I love the, I love me the gear, but uh, <laughs> this is the Samson Q2U uh, USB XLR dynamic microphone. And first of all, people are going to see that this costs like 75 bucks. I think that's the MSRP. And I, I know a lot of people are going to be like, what? Well, you know, I got a tin can and some string. Why don't I just, you know, put the string through the tin can and use that? Won't that sound just as good? That's wrong. This is a good, this is a great sounding microphone. It doesn't sound as good as Joe Rogan's microphone. Okay. <laughs> but remember, we're talking about getting started here. So we want gear that is going to allow us to sound good with no fuss set up. And the reason why this microphone and other USB output microphones like the Blue Yeti Nano, the Samson G Track Pro are so good is because you just plug them into the USB port of your computer and you have a good, a really good sounding microphone. Now, the reason why I'm recommending this now, especially to podcasters, is because it is a dynamic microphone. So there's two kinds of microphones without giving you a lecture, dynamic and condenser as I give you a lecture, the dynamic (laughs) microphone, the big difference is dynamic mics are powered by your voice hitting the mic and the condenser microphone is powered by phantom power from your computer or your audio device. In practice, what that means is the dynamic microphone is gonna pick up less ambient noise in your surroundings, okay? You're generally gonna wanna get it closer to your mouth, which we don't care about for podcasting, where a condenser microphone is gonna pick up more background noise and you're going to generally be louder so for podcasting where you really don't want that background noise you want your voice to be as rich and um, in focus as possible dynamic is a great way to go and also the thing that i really like about this mic so here you can get a look at it here not too many buttons which is really good for a starter mic but look at the bottom over here see the connections on the top there is the USB output, and at the bottom you've got an XLR output. So XLR is professional audio connection. If you do decide that podcasting is for you and you do upgrade, you wanna get an audio mixer, an audio interface, use an audio recorder, you can now use an XLR connection to work with that device. So this just gives you room to grow um, for you. I think it's a great I think it's a great option. So if you have any questions about that microphone or any other microphones, you know, uh, let us know. Let us know in the comments. I'd be happy to to um, address those for you. This of course, 
Uh, this, of course, is Joe Rogan's microphone, the SM, <laughs> SM7B. Uh, if you want to sound like Joe Rogan, uh, this is the one you want to get. <laughs> but I don't, again, I don't rem necessarily recommend this for <laughs> beginners. But uh, hey, if you want to jump straight to the top, this is the one. You will need an audio interface to use this. So, okay, uh, Brian's gonna got a question for us here. Uh, what microphone are you using for this stream? Thank you for the question, Brian. I am using the Audio Technica, the AT2020. It is a condenser microphone. I've had this one for a long time. If I were to get a new one again, I would probably I would start I would start with the Samson Q2U, but I'm using the AT2020 and Devin, Devin's using her headset, and that's yeah. an and that's another thing. I mean, she sounds pretty good. She sounds pretty good, right? I mean, you really don't need to go off the gear deep end to get a minimal minimally viable product, right? A minimally viable podcast. Yeah, I mean, I think this headset was like twenty five dollars, maybe. Um, yeah. At USB, I just plug it into the computer, and it's noise canceling, so it tries to get rid of some of the background noise that's yeah. behind me. So um, as long as you're, I think, too, you know, kind of in a space with good acoustics, a room without a lot of background noise, um, you don't necessarily need expensive equipment to get started. I mean, I know I follow some podcasters on Instagram and since they've been working from home and not in their studio, I've seen a lot of them like recording from their closet to get that, yes. you know, like acoustic sound, yes. which I mean, Doug can probably talk more about that. I don't know if necessarily everyone needs to do that for, you know, starting out, but um, you know, there are definitely ways you can control the noise around you when you're recording this to make sure you're not picking everything up. Well, first of all, another reason to use a dynamic <laughs> mic because it will pick up uh, rever uh, less uh, echo and uh, reverberations. I can't say that word uh, <laughs> today. <laughs> but uh, if you are if you're in a room with lots of hard surfaces and empty space, <laughs> you're gonna get reverb. And uh, one way to get around that is to go into a closet packed with clothes <laughs> that are gonna dampen those sound waves. Uh, and you can also if you really want to, uh, or you're really desperate, you can put a blanket over yourself. Yeah, I've seen that too. That I have work. seen that. <laughs> that. It will work. It will work. <laughs> That's why people do it. But thank, thank you for that, uh, for that question, Brian. So, okay. So then let's move on to, you've got your gear. Oh, another thing is, uh, especially if you're doing interviews, you are going to want some headphones, or some earbuds to plug into the microphone. And that is so if you're doing an interview with somebody you know, over the internet, that is so that their voice doesn't come through the computer speakers, get fed back, get picked up by your microphone and get fed up back into the recording. Uh, then you get this kind of echoey noise that we don't want. So if you're just starting out, you can use just your smartphone earbuds are fine. If you do get more advanced, then you want to look into a better, you know, headset that will let you better monitor your audio quality and do mm -hmm. and do better testing. But your earbuds are a great, or uh, headphones like like Devon are using are a great way mm -hmm. to start as well. So okay, uh, we've got the microphone, the headphones. How do we record the podcast? If you're doing a solo cast. The two programs, or I should say the three pro programs that I see people use and recommend are for Windows, Audacity, which is a free audio recording program. And also you can do you know editing in it. And then for Mac, uh, GarageBand, and for both platforms, you could use something like Adobe Audition, which mm -hmm. is their audio, Adobe's you know, premier audio editing software. Uh, now, if you're doing an interview with somebody over the internet, there are some services you can use that are going to give you good quality and that I recommend using. The first of these is something called Squadcast. So Squadcast is a service where you this is over the internet this is not nobody's dialing in over a phone here everybody's in you know voice over ip on through the internet like just like a zoom meeting or whatever right using a device connected to your computer like a usb microphone 
you in Squadcast, you get into what is essentially a video chat. You do see, you can see the video of the other person uh, who you are talking to. But what Squadcast does, and another service, uh, Zencaster is another uh, service that we've used at Horse's Mouth before. But the great thing about these services are that they record each person's audio locally on their computer, okay, so that the audio sounds best, right? And they, they'll they'll record this in like a WAV file, not an MP3. So you're getting you know, a really quality recording that it's recorded locally, right? So we don't get all that internet degradation. Mm -hmm. There's none of that happening. And then after the podcast is done, it will then upload those files for you where you can put them together into a into one cohesive great sounding podcast back in the old days what people used to have to do to get up to get a podcast like this that sounds like this is you just talk to each other over skype and everybody would have to individually use something like audacity or garage band to record themselves locally so you'd have to trust that everybody else you know yeah. like a round table with like three to four other people you have to trust that everybody's doing this correctly Okay, and they have their level set correctly, and then everybody records themselves locally while you're both while you're all talking on Skype, and then everybody manually uploads the files for a editor to put together. We now have things like Squadcast and Zencaster, make this super easy for you. If you're going to be doing an interview, a based podcast, highly recommend using Squadcast or Zencaster. They're both they're both great for that. And I yeah, the last thing you want is to be you know relying on someone's internet connection to be recording to the cloud because um, I have been in that situation where you get the your internet is unstable message and the quality is not going to be what you want. Um, the guests might not be happy with it. So you might be saying, you know, I don't get why it needs to be local. It makes a huge difference and it relieves just the stress of um, dealing with uncertain internet. Um, so definitely recommend using one of these programs. Yeah, I mean, how many times are you in <laughs> like as a meeting or something, and people's audio degrades, right? Yeah. If if you're doing, uh, you know, why have that show up on your podcast when you can have everybody's audio recorded locally, and it's going to sound good? And I actually have to, uh, when we've used these services before, I've had to tell, you know, the talent on the podcast, you know, don't worry if the other person starts breaking up. If you can understand, you know, by all means, if you can't make out what they're saying. And you need to stop. You know that's that's fine. We can edit it in post. But if they kind of degrade a little bit, just keep going because their recording on the other end is going to mm -hmm. come out fine. It's going to sound great. So that is the power uh, of these these services. So if you have any questions about you know, using a Squadcaster, Zencaster, do let us know. One exciting thing about Zencaster. I probably should have prepared this, but Zencaster in beta, they have a video uh, podcast recording feature that's in beta. So you would be able to, just like having your audio recorded locally, you can have each guest's video recorded locally and then get that sent, sent to you at the end to put together to, for a really high quality recording. That is in beta. I think I am the 11th thousandth person on their beta list. <laughs> So I can't, I can't tell you how it works right now, but maybe you want to get on my list right now <laughs> to, see, to see how it works. But anyway, uh, let's move on to the next thing that uh, you need, which is a host. You need some place that is going to host your audio files and then uh, maintain something called an RSS feed that goes out to all the podcast networks like Apple Podcasts, uh, Google Podcasts, right, Stitcher, Spotify, all of the places where people download and listen to podcasts. You need a host that's going to do that for you. And the one that we use at Horse's Mouth, and we, we switched over, is Libsyn. They're one of the oldest players in the space, mm -hmm. and they... Um, you know they've been they've been a leader in the space uh, for a long long time they have more competition these days but we switched over to Lipson uh a year and a half to 
hasn't been two years. I, it's, it sounds like yeah. a, a year and a half to two years ago, I would say. But we were using a SoundCloud before this. And SoundCloud works, but SoundCloud is SoundCloud's almost more like a, it's for like musicians and stuff like that. And it's almost like a social media like network for musicians. Whereas Lipson is a um, meat and potatoes pod, a podcasting host with all of the functionality that you want from a podcasting host. And I'm, I'm very happy with it uh, for our podcast advisor radio. And uh, we're not moving anytime soon. But uh, another popular one is Blueberry, which is actually spelled B-L-U-E-B-R-R-Y, I believe. <laughs> Devin, do you know? I think, I think that's Yes, I think yeah. that's correct. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then um, Buzzsprout is another one mm-hmm. that's, that's newer, that's kind of coming on strong. So you have options, but Libsyn is kind of the classic tried and true. You want something that's going to give you everything you need. Uh, Libsyn's going to do it for you. Uh, so let's see here. Any questions about podcast hosting? It, at their core, they're super easy to use. You just you get your audio files, you upload them. You know, you put your title and all your your metadata into it, and you hit publish, and it is out. It is out for people to listen to. Um, oh, this is interesting here. So Rich has got an interesting point for us here that I didn't know about. So Rich is saying, heads up, some broker dealers only permit specific hosts. For example, LPL only permits a Buzzkill or something like that. Maybe that's Buzzsprout that that you mean, Rich, or something like that. And uh, reason, I can't see your whole comment here. Uh, Reason, they want to control comments. So please check. That is something I'm going to have to look into. Uh, More Rich. Yeah, that makes sense. So I have heard that um, with with podcasting type things where people can um, comment like on Apple podcasts, they can leave reviews that Mm -hmm. um, some broker dealers um, just want you to monitor it to make sure that you're not getting any sort of testimonial on it. Um, So you definitely, that's a great point, Rich, of just checking with your broker dealer on that. Um, I haven't heard of anyone saying like, no, you can't do podcasts, but they might have rules like that. So, so uh, Buzzsprout may let you like verify or okay, okay comments before they go through. I, Is that? I think it's something like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Interesting. I didn't know that. I have to, have to check that. Well, thank you, thank you, Rich. That's that's very helpful. So check with check with your firm first uh, before providing a uh, getting a host. Um, thank you for that tip. Uh, so let's see. Um, that's that's all i had for the show i do want to kind of share a bonus tip or a bonus service that i have recently found called descript so um i do not have any experience using this this is just something i recently (laughs) found Uh, but I, i have heard you know other podcasting gurus talking about it and what it is is a text editor it's not just this but the killer feature is that it's a text editor for audio files and podcasts. So the idea is you can upload a audio file, podcast file to this Descript service, and you can actually like go through the transcript of the podcast and delete words. And in your audio file, it's going to delete that, that word where you said it or your guest said it. Okay. So you could, you know, find all um and look for ums and delete all all of your ums easily right so that's that in itself (laughs) is awesome uh but you can also move things around maybe you know you you know a lot of podcasts they'll they'll start out with one of like the meaty exciting exchanges from you know the middle of the podcast they'll put that at the beginning as like a tease for the content so you can easily find that you know copy and paste it put it in the front Things like that. And they even have the ability, uh, I don't know if they have that yet or that's still coming, but they even have the ability to add in new words. So they have an algorithm that listens to you as you feed it your audio files and will create your voice if you type in something um, into the into the text editor. It'll it'll create that so you listen to the audio file and it will generate your voice and say those things 
obviously that's kind of technology dangerous. is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Obviously that, you know, that's, I think they have like, you know, disclosures, like do not use this to put words into your guests mouths, right. That they do not literally put words into their mouths, uh, because that's, you know, illegal. So you have to be careful with how you use it. But if you make some kind of blunder and you want to re do your intro without actually redoing it, you could just type it in potentially. Right. So. Yeah. And I think for advisors too, if you need to like add a disclosure or something and maybe you forgot, that's a cool way to be able to quickly put in any disclosure that you might need. Um, yeah. For the episode. Yeah. Uh, okay. So let's, let's kind of move in and just see any uh, questions that we have here. Rich does have another question. So good point. What is the best way to create straight out transcripts without tying in audio correction? which sounds confusing. Um, for just generating a transcript, uh, rev.com is the service that we use for our transcripts. They are a, uh, what's the word? Like a, they have like a bunch of freelancers they, ha they partner with. And when you request a transcript, all these like freelancers, whichever freelancer gets it first, they do the transcript. And so that means that it's done really fast uh, and it's done well. I don't know what their rates are off the top of my head, but uh, um, it's pretty cheap. It's pretty yeah, cheap. Yeah, and they're quick and it's fairly yeah. good for transcription. Some, I mean, you all wanna go through it and make sure there's always some, you know, word maybe they miss, especially if there's a name or something you want to yeah. check and make sure that's spelled right. But they do a fairly good job for a transcription. Yeah. So uh, this is the site rev rev.com. Also, they have something they have a whole bunch of features. They're constantly adding features. One thing they have is an instant first draft, which is a machine generated first draft of your transcript that you get right away. It costs you a little bit like 10 cents a minute extra, I think, to get that. But, you know, if you want something to work with right away, you can do that while you wait for your human generated transcript to come through. And, you know, we also use this, or I also use this for uh, getting caption files for videos, things like that. So rev.com is what I recommend there, Rich, for you. And that looks like that is it for questions. So before we let everybody go, I do want to let you know that this is becoming a regular thing. So every Thursday at two o'clock, Horses Mouth Live is going to come to you on Facebook Live for now. We might expand that into other platforms as well, but we're gonna make the, the Facebook uh, Live our kind of focus in the short term. And so, you know, stay tuned. If I uh, Hopefully you've gotten value uh, from this stream. Uh, if you missed last week's stream where Devin shared some killer Facebook marketing tips, uh, that is available on our Facebook page in our videos section. You can probably scroll down to find it in the feed as well. Mm -hmm. Give that a listen. Uh, thank you, Rich. Uh, thank you for for your questions and your engagement. I really appreciate that. Hope you got some value. And that's it. Any final words from you, Devin, before we close it out? Um, just like Doug said, we're going to be doing this every week. So if there's any topics in particular regarding digital marketing that you want us to discuss, please leave them in the comments. Send us a message. Um, we want to make this as valuable as we can for all of you listening and watching. So feel free to let us know what you think. Okay. Great. That, that does it for this edition of Horses Mouth Live. Until the next stream, take care, everybody. Bye. Bye, everyone.